वेलकम बैक टू द पोस्ट लंच सेशन होप यू ऑल हैड जॉली मील ओके सो द नेक्स्ट प्रेजेंटेशन इज अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग वन एनहैंसमेंट टू स्कूल पोर्टल इज द नेम ऑफ द नेक्स्ट प्रोजेक्ट अंडर द मेंटरशिप ऑफ प्रोफेसर सुप्रतिक गुड आफ्टरनून टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट हियर माय नेम इज मेघना एंड दिस इज माय टीममेट आरुषि सो वी आर हियर टू डिलीवर अ शॉर्ट प्रेजेंटेशन ऑन बिल्डिंग इन एसएमएस एंड व्हाट्सएप बेसिकली एन एक्सटेंशन टू द कम्युनिकेशन पोर्टल for uh, schools in IIT Bombay. So uh, before we begin our presentation, we just like to extend our thanks and gratitude to uh, D.B. Patak sir, to uh, Avinash sir, for providing us with this opportunity to undertake this project. We would also like to thank Professor Supratik, who has been our mentor. And also Praveen sir and Mayur sir, without his assistance, our project would remain incomplete. So uh, let me first paint a picture for you guys. What's happening right now is we have a fully deployed communication portal. So like any other communication portal, this is basically a platform which allows parents of the students studying in the three schools in IIT Bombay to interact with the school authorities. So the current mechanism for uh, notifying the parents about any new postings on the portal is only through email. So this is where our problem statement kicks in. Basically, uh, this is a live project, right? So we have received suggestions and feedback from the parents of the students. And email is not exactly the most suitable option. So in order to make uh, this accessible to everyone, we have decided to explore the options of SMS and WhatsApp. SMS basically for mobile phones which do not have internet or which are not smartphones. And for WhatsApp for parents who have smartphones who are more tech savvy and they want to make it easier rather than logging into the portal. So I'm going to talk about SMS and Arushi about WhatsApp. So we all know what an SMS is, short message service, 160 characters, text messages. We don't use it anymore, but uh, it is the most prevalent uh, method of communication. But how does this really work? Now, if you have a sender and you have a recipient, if both belong to the same network provider, basically your SMS goes through what is known as an SMS center. This SMS center routes your SMS messages from the sender to the receiver. But uh, we have a lot of network providers, and each network provider is affiliated with his own SMS center. So how do two different SMS centers communicate? Because they're naturally running on different protocols. To enable inter-SMS center communication, we have what is known as an SMS gateway. So you've got your sender, the SMS center, an SMS gateway, an SMS sender, and a receiver. So this SMS gateway is the bridge between two SMS centers. So this is the feature that we're trying to exploit here. Because uh, we want to send SMS messages from our portal on a PC to uh, a handset device. So the solution is to have a tie-up with uh, a service provider who can uh, provide us a direct connection to this SMS gateway and therefore forward our messages to the recipient. So what are these SMS service providers? SMS service providers are third parties which have bought bulk SMSs from network providers, and then they break it into fragments, and then they resell it. So basically like a broker or a reseller. So there were two options we could explore in our research. One was free sites. Basically, these are sites wherein you have an online form. You fill in the credentials, which would be your mobile number and message. And then with a security check or a captcha, you can send your message. But this was not really a suitable option for our portal because uh, these sites continuously change their URL so that um, no one can automate filling the form. So we could not really avail the free site option, so we went for paid services. So uh, there are a lot of Indian origin SMS service providers, and we narrowed the five down. The three main criteria we were looking at was naturally cost, the validity, as well as the customer service. So after getting in touch with each of their teams and then using their demo versions and testing it with our portal, we have zeroed down on Spring Edge, option number four. So the reason why we chose Spring Edge is unlike most other services, they do not have a expiry stamp on their messages. So what usually happens is most other SMS service providers say that your messages get expired after a year or after two years. So all of our remaining SMSs in our bank would be rendered useless. But Spring Edge has unlimited validity and it is also um, price efficient. So that is why we decided to go with Spring Edge. And um, now Arushi will be talking about what we did, the research about WhatsApp. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm here to talk about WhatsApp and the issues we faced while implementing this thing. 
so basically whatsapp has the legal issues it doesn't allow you to send bulk smss and uh, or any kind of automation with it is illegal so we basically had to figure out a way in which in the legal air circle we could do something to automate this message sending thing uh, we went ahead with the option of chat apis but we later like what but we later figured out that it was it was banned and it was blocked then we went ahead with the option of apps recording keystroke so that it could record our message and then send it later but with this thing again we had the problem of a person again typing a message manually and then typing the number so the problem was if a person had to do this he could as well type it on a whatsapp phone so why to uh, use this app so we rejected this option third was the sites like wasmi and whatsapp bulk message sender as whatsapp bulk message sender name suggests since it's a, it's a bulk message sender it's illegal and wasmi was it had a plugin of dollar 29 dollars so uh, it was basically it had to be implemented with our chat port uh, with our communication portal but uh, neither was neither did it seem too legal or nor did they reply the people did not reply so we couldn't go ahead with this option and there was the last option of the uh, using official uh, whatsapp dot website we had to figure out a way of uh, using forms to pass on the message as well as number to the whatsapp dot web but again this thing since uh, whatsapp strictly prevents all kind of automation neither did the official whats uh, whatsapp team reply so we couldn't go ahead with this option so the only idea we thought of was to have a dedicated android phone for this purpose it could have a sort of an app which just sits over the os of the android phone and it should regularly poll the server to get the message as well as a number after it gets the message it can contact the whatsapp it can basically interface with the whatsapp on the phone and then uh, like a ui testing mechanism it can send the message to the parents but this requires uh, in depth knowledge of uh, os and we are still we were still studying and discovering it so basically since whatsapp had many legal issues and the automation thing was uh, kind of uh, not possible we went ahead with the bulk sms thing since sms also does not require online con uh, net connection so it was easy for all the society uh, all societal people to use it and the challenges we faced with this was whatsapp basically had the legal issues and since you we are working with a live project uh, the customers were regularly updating their suggestions and they were giving their requirements so we had to cope up with them and implement it regarding our site and then the secondly what we learned was android programming both of us are new to android so we started with android studio and learned and developed basic apps so it was uh, a very nice experience to work on a live project now let's show a demo of our Okay, so um, during the first presentation here, all of you have seen how the KG School IIT Bombay site looks. So we just want to walk you through the modifications that we have made. Uh, first, we'll go to the uh, login site. So this is more of a techno-legal issue because uh, once it comes to parents posting content on the website and forwarding it via SMS to users, we naturally have to put up disclaimers regarding the fact that they need to be responsible for the content that is going on to this website. Okay, so um, every new user has to be approved by the admin, so uh, we'll just show you with a pre-approved um, user ID. Uh, we'd just like to show you how um, we comment on a post. So these are all the public discussions. So when you navigate to a specific discussion, we uh, have a counter variable because every SMS is restricted to 160 characters. So we don't let the user type more than that. And we request them to break the message into two if they really have a need for it to extend 160. So once they hit the submit button, we basically have our script running, which calls the third party API, that is Spring Edge. And we also, uh, at the same time, simultaneously uh, update a log file so that we can keep track of the SMSs that have been sent. So uh, we would show you the log file, but then we would have to log into the server for that. But we can show you a sample which we've created yesterday. 
So this is a simple log file which uh, has the details of the numbers to which our SMS has been forwarded to and the date and timestamp. Thank you. A couple of questions. Yeah. Do you know that there is a hardware piece okay, that comes in which I can take my SIM card and put it? And that can send the SMS. I don't need the bulk message service. Uh, yes, sir, but we want to automate it and run it whenever we want. That yes, would exactly. Mean so the whole purpose is that. No, sir, but uh, like it's, uh, we are posting a comment on the website and it goes to the third. No, no. Sending an SMS, uh, for sending an SMS, there's a hardware device which costs about 3000. It can host about, I think, some at least three to four SIM cards. Okay. And then it has got an interface to the PC and you can send whatever SMS you want. You don't have to work with a bulk website and all that. Okay, so that would have solved a lot of your problem. It costs hardly 3000 rupees or something. Okay. So 3000 for the handset or? No, it's a hardware device which plugs onto your PC. Okay. Okay. So but you can send. spring edge which we were using, it's also cheap. So we thought of going ahead. It's not a question of cheap. You, you don't have to do anything else. Okay. Because it's directly programmable. Yeah. Okay, you can send that means. The other question I had was, why 150 restriction? Sorry? Sir, because the SMS has to be sent. So, sir said that we had to have this restriction of 160. So, that it could be also sent with SMS. Normally, if it is more, they this cut it, it into it But he did not want it. No, he did not want it. But sir, um, like we said, it's a live project. So, we're getting continuous suggestions yes. from the parents. So yes, today. Oh, so, this you are sending, sending SMS. What about receiving? Uh, so so that is the, the future scope of the two-way SMS. Since sir did not want it currently, it requires. If you are gone for that hardware box option, okay, since it has got a your own yeah, this thing, yes. it can receive and you can access it. So that is why that is better. Yes. You have purchased one, I think. You are not using it. Okay. Yes. Or T10 KT, I had found this out because we wanted to send SMS. We are not implemented. I think we purchased it. Yes. Second, what? Uh, why you did not implement WhatsApp? So they had, they had many legal issues. Basically, they did not want anybody to automate. They want a person to manually open the. No, no, but you are going to write an Android app. No, is that legal or Ill illegal? Sir, because that is working with a dedicated phone, so we think it should be legal. Huh. So there's been a lot of debate, but it, we can't say with 100% uh, assurance that it is legal. But it's probably the most legal option we have at hand, and that's not something we could pursue without being sure. So we are uh, we've put it at bay. But we explored multiple options and that's probably the most um, legal. It's legal business. Who, who is declaring it illegal? WhatsApp, uh, WhatsApp's documentation. The WhatsApp site? WhatsApp site. Because they have been working on their own spin-off for bulk SMS, which they plan to then sell and, you know, okay. so that's why they don't want any. There have been a lot of APIs which work and have been recently banned, in fact. Because they're working on, they've been blocked. Because they're working on their they've own spin-off. Blocked. Spin -off. blocked yeah. Banned is different. Block, blocked block. is different. Okay, so, as, uh, until the time they block your uh, Android, you're okay. <laughs> yes, sir, but um, their algorithms are very efficient because um, in case you send, end up sending your message to a number which is not registered on WhatsApp, then yeah. immediately your account gets blocked. If you send more than almost four to five SMS messages per fixed time, again it gets blocked. I don't know so how WhatsApp will ever re realize that this phone is sending automatic messages. They are very fancy algorithms, sir. I mean, we have. It cannot be a, any fancy algorithm because I, I, I will ensure that I will send one WhatsApp message every five seconds. I can delay my sending, no? Delay is fine, but Already when we send bulk email, we delay it. Yes, sir, that is possible, but again, it's not uh, allowed by WhatsApp. They don't come um, so. And the chat APIs, I think they don't delay. That is why they have been blocked. Huh. And there will be inconsistencies, not anyway. a risk worth taking. Okay. So. so, you like the work? Yes, sir. Did Professor Supratik like your work? Uh, we I hope so. <laughs> it was more of a techno-legal project. Okay. Okay. Thank you.